guys, first of all, uh, I might have had a little bit too much fun last night, so if I start speaking in like a different language, let me know. Uh, it's all these guys fall over here. Boomit, looking at you. Yeah, but I'll, I'll, I'll get through it, I'll try to be quick. Yes. Oh boy. Um, another thing I have to say before I start is um, Jenny is also part of the, the Germany project uh, workshop. The thing is though, uh, this has come together very last minute, so she's not presenting with me, but she's joining the team afterwards. That's why I'm just talking by myself. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Mets Gravel. I'm going to start with the theme first, because we'll get to grab it. It's cool. Okay. Genesis. The origin or mode of formation of something. This tale has its genesis in fireside stories. That's the term for the theme. I want to ask you one question first. What do you think is the goal of Mets, the Mets workshop? Does so anyone have a concrete answer? Skills exchange. Skills exchange, I like it. What else? Networking. Networking, yeah. Cultural experience. Cultural experience, cool. Anything else? Uh, Fun, yeah. Okay. Fun. Uh, Buying a new liver the next weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so, I really want to address the question is, uh, the question like, what is the one thing we want to achieve and what do we want to leave behind in the place that we hold the workshop? Um, <laughs> Every year we have 14-ish projects, and don't get me wrong, they're really great. Like, we've all had super awesome experiences, learned so much through them. Um, but they are very build-focused, a lot of them. There's, there's kind of, uh, the focus is to get to one thing at the end and then show that thing off. Um, these projects also have various fates after our two weeks together working on them. Some are still around and in use and happy. Others are a bit worse for wear, unfortunately. Uh, we're kind of inconsistent with this kind of stuff. Um, what I propose for MEDS 2019 is kind of a return to Genesis, back to basics, if you will. Uh, a step back to the fundamental principle of every workshop ever. Learning. Sounds pretty obvious, but hear me out. <laughs> um, how many of you know what this is? Good. <laughs> um, but how many of you have tutored participants who couldn't change the drill bit? There we go. Um, what about this? And this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. Sorry about the bad Google image search pictures, I was in a hurry. Um, this is completely okay. Um, not, the, the, the participants not knowing how to use the drill is completely okay. Uh, the workshop is a great place for everyone to learn new things. Um, but what I propose for the next meds is really a focus on building skills more than anything else. Uh, building and developing skills both for experienced participants as well as total first-timers. Not a focus on big projects. And, oh, hang on, sorry. Um, yeah, we also mentioned that right now, that sometimes with the big projects we often don't have enough tasks for all the participants to, to work on. Uh, not enough tools, participants going to another workshop looking for, for stuff to do. What one thing that maybe this approach can handle, can, can figure out? Of course, there will be projects. I'm not saying we don't do projects. But I want to change kind of the, the scale, the number, and the purpose of these projects. I want it to, to differ a little bit to, to what we've done before. And I want it to be focused on learning. Learning something new or mastering something familiar. And this is something I think we can achieve. So. Ah, shit, I was supposed to be doing a slide, sorry. Uh, yeah, so a return to the genesis of what a workshop is. That's the theme. Um, if it seems a little bit broad, it's because it's still a work in progress. We could figure it out a little bit together as well. Um, but now I want to tell you where I propose we should do it. Where? 
gravel seat, also known as gravel. And that's Berlin. <laughs> that's my house. I think, right? Yeah. Um, that's the airport. That's the airport. <laughs> that's, uh, and that's where it is. The good thing is, uh, you can use public transport all the way. It takes an hour and a half to get there. With trains. Yes, question. Uh, no. Uh, there are two airports, just don't forget about Yes, yes, it's like, where is it, here? Yeah. yeah. But that's even shorter, yeah. yeah. But how many people fly with Ryanair? Okay, never mind, that's, that's the that's <laughs> question. This is the location. It is 34 hectares, I should be reading. It is um, 34 hectares, 30 kilometers away from Berlin, um, the Schoenefeld Airport. It is, uh, until recently, abandoned Russian <laughs> lung hospital. Um, complex. It's called a uh, Hausstadt Grabelse. This is what it looked like in this. This is kind of the all the buildings and the entrance and main road and the bridge and, and the lake. There's like a lot of buildings. Um, this is what it looked like in 1890. Well, 1930. But it looked the same between 1890 and 1930. After that period with the war, it was occupied and used as kind of a military base. Um, and this is what it looks like now. Uh, Jenny, could you... the photos, please. Um, yeah. I say recently uh, abandoned because since two years ago, a community of... Uh, you, can, you can scroll the photographs while I talk. Uh, until two years ago, a community of activists, artists, hackers, musicians, makers, and hippies have moved in and made it their home. They formed several collectives hoping to revitalize the location. They started by throwing an awesome festival party. Can you go back to the presentation for a second? <laughs> What's that? It's the InDesign document. In design document. Oh. So last year they threw, uh, two, two years ago they threw the first one and last year again in the summer, uh, a, a crazy festival party with 300 people. That's the uh, chapel, the roofless chapel which uh, is super nice when you put carpets down here and you look at the stars. Anyone getting uh, Tara vibes yet? Maybe? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, yeah, so they threw the party to get people to come to this location because it's a little bit out there. Um, but they instantly fell in love with it. And they're like, we have to show more people and we have to save this abandoned place. Um... So yeah, now they've started moving in, renovating the spaces. Can you go back to the, to the photographs? Renovating the spaces um, for living in, in during the summer. And this year, they're also putting infrastructure in for winter. Uh, keep going, keep going. Can, can I connect it? Yeah, okay. Um, so they've started moving, like, furniture and cleaning up a little bit. Um, but where's the, where's the? <laughs> I'll talk about all the, so this is like kind of what the rooms look like the other side. This kind of stuff. It's pretty raw, yes, but um, it's, they, they've started doing all of this kind of stuff. Uh, you can keep scrolling. Thanks, Jenny. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, what they're doing now is opening workshops, workspaces, hack spaces, uh, renting out to artists from Berlin who spend like a month living there in the summer. Um, full time, like kind of as a retreat. And it has this kind of like vibe of graffiti artists spending time there and like doing installations there and when they had the festival on they had all these temporary structures organized by the team there to, to host all the different things they were doing. Um, in the next year they hope to uh, restore more and more, working with uh, more and more institutions from Berlin, opening more context there and collaborating with more people and students. We could be these people and students. Um, and I think we should. Because the place is really, absolutely magic. Um, can you can you go back to the presentation, please? It's more of a party. Um, it's beautiful. Um, more about like the actual people there. Um, there's there's a few, but the like main people are there all the time. Uh, Issa and Phil, they're makers, which work closely together with the Fab Lab in Berlin and became a gravel maniacs during the festival. There have been rumors about a small fab lab in the truck at the lake. So that's a potential really cool thing. Bjorn thinks of a workshop at the lake. 
Last to built the ninja room. So the ninja rooms are the rooms that you saw, like that they're renovated. Uh, and it's in charge of visuals and interior. And there's there's a like proper fully functioning kitchen there. But I'll, I'll get to the utilities and stuff. Uh, General was to realize the world's largest marketplace is Lake. Marketplace is uh, Wi-Fi is working already. It's a good start. Belgium tea. <laughs> um, Tim is uh, an open source enthusiast, ha head of the uh, open source ecology Germany, and uh, builder of the sink loop dishwashing and water recycling system for the facility. Um, and Steiny, I think that's his name, is the CEO of Eckert Berlin and is waiting for us taking over the venue to realize Silicon Valley for kids with us. Yeah. So one of the biggest initiatives that actually has the the right to use the place, and we use the place through them, is called Kids Glow. They want to do like new education for children, and they want to use this site as a thing. It's a little bit out there, but they're, they're all there. Um, yeah. So, the team. Um, apart from the local initiatives that are already there, Jan is uh, one of them. He is doing the tiny houses with the Bauhaus campus um, in Berlin. So he's, he's like an, an actual architect and him, him and his colleagues are experimenting with the concept of mobile homes and he's using Grabozy, the project, to, to develop that a little bit as well. Um, these are all these school people already involved in various Grabozy things. You might recognize Jan, who's in Ghent, with the, with the big camera. Um, they're already involved there, either as artists like Katharina or helping organize like uh, Hilda, Scott, and Loren. Wait, that's Loren. Um, yeah. Another thing. Oh, Jenny's there as well. Hi, Jenny. Um, this is the D School doing the largest design thinking workshop uh, event for the Guinness World Record at the DCOM Festival. So, most of you know that I'm working in Berlin for the D-School, and Joe and I and other people have been through this institution. And it does user-centered design and focuses on this kind of stuff. But it also is a really supportive place. Every semester, 80 students come through the place from all over the world, really happy and hungry for, for projects, you know? They really want to help out. So I want to tap into the potential of this school like, I spoke to Loren, I just told her, hey, gave her like the brief notes of the project, she's like, when do I sign up? And these people are serious with their commitments. It's not, it's not, it's not a joke, they, they, they take it seriously, they, they live for this stuff. Um, yeah, and at this school, we get along. Uh, they, they could very easily give us a lot of post-its and uh, other advice and, and sponsorship and that kind of stuff. Which time do I have? Okay. All right. The cost. So here's here's an interesting thing. Grabozy is completely free. We don't pay a single penny to spend time there. We will pay for expenses like uh, water, electricity, um, other things. Uh, I don't have a detailed list of all this kind of stuff because it's it's not ready yet. There needs to be more talking communication with them. But we have the permission to be there for free. And um, they have offered to take care of services like moving the trash off of the location, helping us bring stuff there, helping us set up there beforehand, cooking for us. Uh, cleaning is kind of like we got to look after ourselves. This place is very special to the people who are there. And it's beautiful. So us damaging in any, in any way is not cool. Really not cool. Um, you can play the video in the background while I talk. Yes, I had to fly the drone there. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, another thing is there. It's it's raw. You, you've seen the photographs. You see you see what what it what it's like. So they are developing it there, but it might be we need to kind of you know how how can one say this? Um, bite the bullets and just say like it it, it won't be it'll. it'll it might be tense a little bit, all right? I know, I know uh, tense are not very popular, but um, there is a lot of space in the buildings. There's just not a lot in them. So the people who are there are putting stuff in there right now, and by 2019, they have plans for 
hot showers and that kind of stuff. Right now, that doesn't exist there. But there is electricity, water, and Wi-Fi, and rooms being renovated right now. There's just not a lot. Ooh, okay. Oh, one other option that opens up with the fact that it's for free is we might be able to pay tutors to come. This is just a suggestion. It's something I was thinking about. Um, so basically, either the, the price of the entire workshop goes down because we don't pay for the accommodation. I'm not saying any numbers right now because way too soon for that. Um, but it could be a potential thing that we say, tutors, we respect what you're doing, bring your skills, share those skills with the participants, and we can give you some money. I think that's maybe an interesting next step that we can take with the, with the workshop. All right. Oh, fuck, I completely forgot. Sorry, like I said, it, this, they, they, they're kind of crazy in Germany. They've done a whole 360 mapped thing of the location. You can like look out, look whenever you want. And not only that, <laughs> inside all the rooms, no, like, all, I, I found this like yesterday and I was like, holy shit. <laughs> Um, you can just like... <laughs> Slow! Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I have like two more minutes, that's all. Uh, what else is cool? Here's uh, the word. George Clooney? Also, there's, there's Monuments Men, the film was filmed there in part, so they have a poster of George Clooney there, and they photographed it or something. Uh, this is actually a common filming space, filming location. Yeah. Because um, yeah. my university um, is using this space a lot. Um, when we threw the parties, because it was illegal, to throw parties here, we said we're filming something. So, yeah. This is like the giant garden that's in between the buildings. So, if you look at the like line of the floor plan, there's a giant space in the middle and surrounded by the forest as well. And these things here are the huge uh, parking garages, which are like... Uh, is it this one? No, it's a stairway. On the, on the sofa, yeah. There's, there's a really like famous sofa there. Uh, here's the church, the, 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 the chapel without the roof. Uh, I'll show you the lake as well. Sure. Uh, so yeah, there's a lake. You can swim in it. You can put boats in it. Uh, all of um, what else? Oh, there's like so many like art installations uh, in there because they're doing, they use all the rooms kind of like to throw, the, with, with the festival they have like each room's got a, like a gallery and kind of thing. Some of them are a little bit creepy and spooky, but it's kind of like the atmosphere of the place. Uh, oh, this is like one of the, one of the buildings and balconies. Uh, <coughs> This is like. Oh. Sorry, sorry, I know it's How many of the buildings are actually active holes? All of them, but some of them have like top floors shut off, right? You can do the entire circle because all the buildings are connected except for uh, the main entrance gap. So you can walk through all of the buildings. But not all rooms in the higher floors are the same. But I showed you the, like, um, the attic of the main building. That's all completely free and usable. So it's like. Uh, Except for certain rooms, the entire campus access is accessible for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I had, I had like pictures of... Like these these rooms, it's like really large rooms. Like we, we threw the indoor disco thing in here. Um, How many people do you think you can take here? Like an average. I'm, I'm, I'm saying the, the, the usual meds number. So it's like, it's, I don't know, it's 100 and, well, 250 max, right? 200 max. 200 max. I mean, look at this. Yeah. 200, yeah. Let's say 200. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what kind of project? All right. So. So. You are skilled in photography, right? Come teach the photography to the people there. Anyone else has a particular skill? And we can like source it from our network, from uh, I, the network in, in Berlin that I have through the D school and all this kind of stuff. So we can literally pick and choose 
what are the most interesting skills to us that we decide as a community. And we're like, we're going to learn it ourselves and then maybe next year's teach it ourselves or teach it here. That's, that's, that's the project theme kind of LinkedIn. And that's kind of my way <coughs> into the people at Gravelsey as well because they want to really focus on the, the teaching and learning. I know, I know it's a little bit open and a little bit vague, but that is, that is, it's like potential there to, to build on that. Maybe a resin, what was it you do, James? Resin pressing, is it? Or what's it officially called? Uh, casting. Resin casting. You want to do a workshop? Yeah. I put the hay with All right, that's pretty much it. Do you have any questions? I think this stopped because your battery is up. Yeah, it was like low battery and stuff, so a little bit over time, sorry. Um, any questions? Real quick. <coughs> yeah? In the beginning you said about what's staying there after mass, <coughs> and then the things just get destroyed and not used anymore later yeah. on. So what's your plan for this place? What would you like mass to bring to this place and where they can have Maybe we don't bring physical things, but we bring knowledge. Yeah. We bring, we bring the skills and we figure out a context where we, we share that there in the place. But we don't leave anything there. If you don't leave anything, it's, it can't die. But how, for example, the building skills can be teached? Taught. Taught, sorry. Uh, without like a practical... There will, of course, it'll be, it'll, be, it'll be practical, but maybe I'm saying instead of building one big thing which cannot be moved away afterwards, we build several small things. Ah, okay, or, or, or we change do the this. Scale. Change the scale. Yeah, change the scale. Maybe have 200 projects, but they're all small instead of 14 big ones. Yeah? Is there a possibility of having big ones? Yes, yes. So they are also kind of interested in talking to us, kind of like maybe what we can build for them, for, for the use of future people attending the place, uh, whatever. So there's a potential of, even if we build something big, let's say a mobile house or something, or a sculpture or whatever, that everybody who comes after us actively uses it in the place. And that's a place that, that kind of needs the support and the infrastructure. Because they're building it themselves now. But we could come as well and say, like, maybe, maybe like we do the smaller stuff, we have one big thing, basically. And then we dedicate uh, and say, like, this is yours, use it. That would be an also nice exchange for them letting us use the space for free. Any more questions? Well, writing, uh, did you tell? I don't know what the rating things are. Okay. Six is good, one is not so good. <laughs> yes, so if there's no more questions, thank you so much for your attention. I know it's a little bit alternative, the presentation, but I really felt like when I saw this place and I saw this community of people, I was like, yes, I could see this fitting. It'll take a little bit of work. But I could, I could see this happening. And if you guys like it, one more thing. There's also, like, I gotta, I gotta be honest with this, there's a potential of doing it not 2019, 2020. So it's, it's flexible. They, they're not going anywhere. They're there to stick around. I, I, yeah, that's it. <laughs>